So while they're both technically bikes, the, the air bike and, and the bike erg, they're very different machines. Not only are they different machines, but they have a very different effect, a very different stimulus, and therefore a very different result on the body. So let's explore these different training effects, these varying physiological stimuli that these two machines can place on the body, and also how coaches, how trainers, and how athletes can use them to their advantage. And I want to note this is not a product review. This is a review of the training effect, not the two machines themselves. Now there's a very basic training principle that we need to understand, which will help us as we talk about the effect of these two different machines. And that is whatever the limiting factor of, of a training session is, whatever the limiting factor is of an exercise that you're doing, that is what that session, that exercise will improve. So if you're limited in heavy deadlifts by your strength, your ability to actually lift the weight, doing heavy deadlifts will improve your strength. If you're limited in high rep push-ups by your localized muscular stamina, that's what the session will train. And if a long run limits you because you get out of breath, then that long run will train your cardiorespiratory endurance. This is called the super compensation principle. And as I said, we'll come back to this because it will help us understand the differences between the effects of these two machines. Now, a primary difference of these two pieces of equipment is pretty obvious at first glance. The, the air bike often uses the upper and, and lower body, the arms and the legs, whereas the bike erg focuses predominantly on the legs. So to understand the different training effects that this affords the body, we need to understand some very basic physiology. We need to look at the role of the blood. Our blood is there to transport oxygen to our muscle beds, to take carbon dioxide and other byproducts away, and also to, to transport the, the hydrogen ions, which is that sort of acid feeling that you get, away from the muscles to the kidney to be broken down and buffered. And while our blood is highly efficient at completing these processes, the more blood that we have to send to more different muscle groups, the, the sooner we reach our threshold, the sooner we reach the threshold of training, and the sooner we start to hit the wall and lose our intensity. So put more simply, there's only so much blood to go around the body. And if we're taxing both our upper body and our lower body, so all of those capillary beds, all of those muscles in both our arms and our legs, if, we are, if we're taxing both, as we would see, for example, on the air bike, then we are more likely to reach these cardiorespiratory thresholds a little sooner, as opposed to the bike erg, where we're not trying to, to service as many muscle groups at one time. And remember, whatever the limiting factor of a session is, that's what that session will train. So if we are more taxed from a cardiorespiratory point of view on something like the air bike, the air bike then would be a superior method of training that cardiorespiratory system. And this is an example of a phenomenon called blood shunting. And shunting is where we send the blood to different, often alternating and conflicting parts of the body, which causes high stress, again, on the cardiorespiratory system. So while in some movements we may only be using a small number of muscle groups, on the air bike, not only are we using the lower body and the upper body, but we are both pushing and pulling on the upper body movement. And of course, by contrast, a bike erg uses only the lower body uh, and therefore is not gonna be as taxing on the cardiorespiratory system. And as a result, we can usually achieve much higher power outputs on the, the air bike because we're using both our upper and our lower bodies. This means that although power production is higher because of this blood shunting effect and there only being so much blood to go around, we often reach exhaustion for a given intensity a little faster on the air bike. Now on the topic of blood shunting, it's worth spending a moment talking about what we can pair these movements with, the air bike as opposed to the bike erg, for maximal effect in your training. Let's look at this in the context of a multimodal session, one where we are training multiple different modes or styles of exercise concurrently. And if we look at something like the, the air bike, the air bike, again, lower body and upper body. If we were to pair this with a movement like, for example, muscle ups or a hang power clean and jerk, two movements which are predominantly upper body movements, because we are pre-fatiguing our upper body on the air bike, it's actually gonna drop our intensity in that second movement, in the muscle up or the hang power clean and jerk. So although this may be an effective way to pre-fatigue the upper body and therefore train localized muscular stamina, it's not necessarily the most effective way to build work capacity. If, however, we were to pair one of these same two upper body dominant movements with a bike erg, 
Because we are shunting blood to conflicting areas of our body, we should be able to maintain a higher intensity. That is, the muscles that we're using on that bike erg are not going to impact or conflict with those muscles we're using in our upper body on a muscle up or a hang power clean and jerk. And again, we come back to this principle of super compensation. Whatever we are taxing, whatever the limiting factor of that session is, is what that session will train. So, an air bike paired with an upper body movement is probably going to limit your localized muscular stamina, therefore that's what it will train. The bike erg, on the other hand, is probably gonna be more taxing to your cardiorespiratory system when paired with an upper body movement. Because this is the limiting factor, that is what that combination would train. So let's explore this concept a little bit further and come back to talking about these two pieces of equipment in isolation. Now, if you perform a sustained high intensity piece on each of these forms of bike, you're gonna notice a big difference. Someone who's a pretty well balanced, relatively well balanced athlete or individual will, will complain first about their legs burning, localized muscular stamina on the bike erg, whereas they're probably gonna be more limited by their cardiorespiratory endurance on the air bike. As we've talked about, this is because the air bike just recruits a lot more muscles. And again, we come back to our principle of super compensation. Whatever the limiting factor of a session is, is what that session will train. The limiting factor on the bike erg is often the fatigue resistibility of, of the lower body, of the muscles of the leg. Because of this, this is what the limiting factor is. This is what the bike erg will train, your ability to resist fatigue. And this is very much a localized peripheral training effect. On the other hand, the limiting factor of the air bike is more a central fatigue as opposed to a peripheral fatigue. We're taxing your cardiorespiratory system more, that is your limiting factor, and therefore the training effect is one that will improve your overall centralized cardiorespiratory system. Now, of course, nothing exists in isolation, and we're not saying that the, the air bike will not train localized muscular stamina, nor are we saying that the bike erg will not train your more central-based cardiorespiratory system. But it's a matter of percentages. Let's say, for example, that, that the air bike, you are 60% limited by cardiorespiratory endurance, 40% limited by your localized or peripheral fatigue. On the bike erg, on the other hand, maybe you're looking more at a 60% limitation of lower body peripheral stamina and a 40% of your limitation coming from your cardiorespiratory endurance. Now, when it comes to testing full body anaerobic power, how many watts you can produce and sustain, you cannot beat the air bike. The fact that you are recruiting so many more muscle groups means your intensity is extremely high. It's one of our favorite methods, not only of training this anaerobic energy system, but also testing it. So let's close this up by revisiting this super compensation principle. Whatever it is that you are limited by is what that session will train but also the principle of specificity, which tells us a similar thing. Training something will improve your ability to do that thing. So to answer the question of which is best, which wins in this head-to-head -head battle, it depends what you're trying to train. If you are trying to train what would be limited by the air bike, use the air bike. If you're trying to train the limiting factor of the bike erg, then the bike erg is for you. Of course, these machines both have an important part in a program to improve your fitness, your performance, and your overall health.